Ласкаво просимо до нашого кафе «Досвіду», де ми об'єднуємося, щоб знайти нові шляхи співпраці та підтримки у ці непрості часи. Дякуємо, що ви з нами сьогодні. Good day, everyone, and welcome to our online experience cafe, Academia Society Business Social Actions for Crisis Response in Ukraine. I'm Katerina Boychenko, represent web to learn and I'm thrilled to guide you uh, through today's session. Today we gather at a pivotal moment, not just in the history of Baltic region, but in the fabric of global solidarity and resilience. This crisis resulting from the war in Ukraine has unfolded challenges of unprecedented scale affecting lives, economies, challenges, and uh, the very essence of our shared human values. Yet within these challenges lie vast opportunities, opportunities for innovation, unity, and the strengthening of our communities through cross-sectoral collaboration. Our online experience CAFE is a part of the Baltics for UA project by enhancing university resilience, upskilling academic staff and students, and leveraging universities social responsibility. We pave the way for a future where education and social actions go hand in hand in supporting affected populations. Let's acknowledge uh, the backbone of our initiative, our partners. The Baltics for UA project, supported by Erasmus Plus and our dedicated partners from across the Baltic region, Greece and Ukraine, serves a shining example of what we can achieve when we unit for a common cause. Our event today is organized by dedicated web to learn team I'd like to extend my gratitude to Katrina Juru and Stefania Kanamu, the architects of today's event. Their dedication to research and collaboration has been instrumental in bringing us together for this cause. We draw inspiration from a rich foundation of research and collaborative efforts, including the report, and contributions to international scientific conferences. Our gathering today transcends tra traditional boundaries aiming to cultivate a dialogue that bridges academia, civil society, and business sectors. This multidisciplinary approach is our strength, allowing us to explore innovative solutions to support the war-affected communities in the Ukraine and the Baltic region. Today, you will hear from inspiring speakers who have led, by example, showcasing social actions that bridge academia, business, and civil society. Their stories are not just narrative of success. They are blueprints for how we can contribute to developing resilient and inclusive communities in times of crisis. Uh, we're privileged to welcome our first speaker from academia, Dr. Gintare Tautkevichene, and the Visionary Library Director and Associate Professor at Kaunas University of Technology, known for her profound impact on open access and digital education, and Lina Yonaitite, a senior information manager with deep expertise in social work and inclusive education, and uh, their combined uh, insights into academia role in crisis response are set to enlighten our discussion today. So the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. We are very glad to be part of this event and thank the web to learn team for inviting us to this workshop and discussions. As Katerina introduced, I am Gintari Tautkiavicini, Director of Kunas University Technology Library. With me is my colleague Lina Yonaititi, and we are presenting a topic 
collaboration between academic community and the society at Konos University of Technology. Uh, today, we live in a challenging world where tensions and constantly rising, accompanying by difficult situations, military conflicts, and crises. Universities, as the most advanced part of society, can and must contribute to helping people overcome the humanitarian crisis. The university library and other university departments, together with international partners, are implementing a number of projects and actions, organize various activities to support Ukraine and its people. Actions are usually organized in cooperation with academic staff, researchers, students, as well as people from the local community, public organizations, politicians, artists. We also involve school children. The library, together with the Faculty of Social Sciences, Art and Humanities, has established a citizen science hub aiming to engage and foster people from society participate and be actively involved into collaborative activities. And now, Lena will present you activities the library organized and tell you more about the collaborative activities with citizens engagement. So, Lena, now is yours. Yes, so I want to present you how Kaunas University of Technology uh, Academic Society foster collaboration among civil society. And one of the ways was through psychological support. Uh, we organized meditation session for Ukrainian students together with Lithuanian students. And this session was led by psychologist Amantas. Uh, students just had the opportunity to get to know uh, relaxing techniques and various ways uh, to calm down their minds, their minds. And also, I need to say that for every social action, we are trying to find a good uh, specialist in order to provide the qualitative event for community. So, for example, art therapy sessions was led by artist Indra Makelita Mapune, and the first art therapy session was interesting and useful uh, for students. And it's worth mentioning that. Uh, the second one was organized together with Ukrainian student Yulia, uh, who participated in first one session. So she was initiator to organize second art therapy activity together with us. And that shows uh, us that academic uh, community members were enabled to organize uh, events by themselves or together, uh, together with us. Uh, and I want to say that in our social actions, we want to involve uh, people as much as possible. That's why we choose various event formats. And one of them is the screening of the films and discussions after it. Uh, first one was uh, film White Angel, The End of Marinka. And discussion was led by previous mentioned Ukrainian st student. And second one film, uh, The Earth is the Blue as an Orange, was uh, special because we had the honor to welcoming Anna and her daughter, uh, main characters in the film, uh, to present their personal experience uh, with the war and uh, the shooting of the film. So uh, these events was also about collaboration uh, with different kind of citizens. Uh, talking about art events, uh, when we organizing them, we wanted to support the Ukrainians, first of all, uh, to show their current problematic situation, uh, for example, through art, uh, which means a different type from than uh, the previous, previously mentioned in discussion. Uh, therefore, we involved and collaborated with the Ukrainian artist uh, Bata Kurkul in the whole process. And also, as I mentioned before, since the art therapy event, uh, we made a connection with the artist Indra. 
uh, speaking about relations with other institutions, uh, we started uh, our cooperation with the social services center of another city, uh, which is called Yonova. And we organized a Christmas workshop in order to increase the show social participation of uh, Ukrainians in community activities. And this event uh, was attended by uh, Ukrainian families, and they uh, learned how to make Advent words together with Anna Vokova, and she works in Kona's public library. And she led the education and not only taught how to make uh, words, but also told Ukrainians about uh, Lithuania's traditions, everyone shared their thoughts, and so on. So in this event, uh, we collaborate with uh, two institutions. Uh, we also joined an issue diplomas initiative and with, with Ukrainian student help, we organize exhibition in honor to uh, the memory of Ukrainian students who will never graduate because by invasion in the country. So this is one more example of uh, cooperation, not only with other institutions, but also with existing initiatives. Uh, and I need uh, to mention that we collaborate with various Kona City gymnasiums and we organize lectures on the topics of information literacy and those lectures uh, most often in distance. So this uh, gives us opportunity to collaborate with uh, various Lithuanian uh, city schools. Uh, we also have experience in organizing uh, mixed events that take uh, place at the same time by contact and distance. So this was public lecture about uh, information war. And this one was about that Ukraine uh, has made the whole world to see uh, the scale of the information war in, uh, that this country is waging. And it shows everyone that information more can be defined in many different ways, but it will always uh, involve fake news, propaganda, and false uh, reports. Uh, talking about uh, collaboration with NGOs, we organize event with organization Caritas, which is one of uh, which is one of the uh, leading organizations in Lithuania, uh, which providing humanitarian support uh, to Ukrainians. So in this event, people uh, could hear about. Uh, what specific support is provided, uh, how they can help uh, help Ukrainians and how people themselves uh, can join and help of socially uh, sensitive uh, groups. Uh, also, as I mentioned before, we are trying to involve uh, both our uni university community and citizens. So we organized uh, guided tours during which all people could come to library and hear the story of the establishment of the library, visit the bookstock, see the oldest uh, book uh, preserved at the libraries of Colness, the oldest, oldest printed books and all the interesting things uh, related to library. So in conclusion, uh, all these social actions gives us a lot of experience and opportunity to collaborate with different social groups. Uh, for example, new pro projects were initiated with the Faculty of Social Sciences. Sciences. Uh, the highest level manager of the university participates in, in these events. Also, as I mentioned in our presentation about Ukrainian student uh, who came to library to tell us her ideas and ask us to help uh, organized event. It shows that the highest level of citizen involvement, uh, which is empowerment, has been achieved. And libraries organized events encourage academy and citizens engagement uh, to provide more support to Ukraine and other socially uh, sensitive groups. Thank you so much for, for your presentation. And uh, 
Uh, we have the pleasure of welcoming Dr. Sanita Rinsone, a distinguished figure from the civil society sector. Sanita brings a wealth of expertise in digital culture heritage and participatory methods. Her dedication to meaningful change is evident through her role as an initiator and coordinator of Science for Ukraine, well-known initiative in Ukraine and whole Europe. So please, Sanita, the floor is yours. Thank you and hello. Actually, the question you asked last was quite hard to answer. <laughs> All options seemed very, uh, very, um, yeah, very effective ones. Um, yeah, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to join uh, this discussion. This discussion, um, I feel a bit like sitting in two chairs, <laughs> but today um, I will present myself as a um, uh, initiator and co-coordinator of uh, NGO Science uh, for Ukraine. Um, first of all, I will briefly explain what it is about, and, and then I will uh, show how we make collaboration with uh, academia and also a bit of business world. So uh, we started as complete grassroots initiative on social media, on Twitter, uh, on two days um, after the full-scale war in Ukraine began. And still then we are um, international community of volunteers who do all this work. Uh, and most of us are connected to higher education or research institutions, but um, something changed in the August, 2023, where we made a decision that yes, yes, NGO is needed. We cannot uh, function anymore like simple initiative as we were before, because it gives a bit, bit more effective tools how to uh, continue our mission and our mission is what you see we support um, Ukrainian academic community first yes of course the surviving the war and all it brings uh, but also uh, we are very much in care about continuity of Ukrainians science and strengthening its presence in international science arena and the map you see here um, it actually illustrates the widespread global reach of not only our efforts, but generally the support for Ukrainian academic community, because these these blue little points direct where support was offered for Ukrainian uh, scholars, students, academic institutions. And it's even not the most intense period. It's, it was captured some um, months ago. <clears throat> um, overview of what uh, what science ukraine of ukraine is doing so um yes first of all monitoring and collecting information uh, is uh, one of our key activities we are closely following the current situation of ukrainian research higher education institutions and also scholars and students both those who are in ukraine and also those who have fled uh, we follow decisions taken by governments and funding agencies, announced support mechanisms and general funding schemes. And we are gathering this information and providing it available for Ukrainian scholars, students, academic institutions. We keep uh, this data accessible and we also take care to make it updated as possible because information, well, situation changes all the time. So we need to take a like daily care of our database. Another thing is dissemination, support and mentoring. And we do this through various social media channels and platforms. Uh, we disseminate opportunities, provided support. Uh, and also we offer mentoring to ensure that Ukrainian scholars are well informed and able to access necessary resources and better equipped when entering uh, academic uh, academic circles, academic institutions in other countries. And for example, our UK team uh, has established a special mentoring scheme for Ukrainian scholars and students, and, and, and that works really well. Um, another thing is analysis and also advocacy. We closely monitor, as I said, the situation in the field. Um, we are analyzing the data that we have, and uh, this allows us to identify gaps in support where interventions could be made. Uh, we are 
writing recommendations, publishing different types of articles, so to uh, streamline the support efforts from international bodies and national agencies, ensuring that help uh, meets the actual needs of Ukrainian scholars and institutions. And of course, currently the situation is more or less stabilized in this field, And uh, but at the beginning it was a, quite a house and, and this was very valuable to see where support needs to be added more. Um, yes, and uh, a partnership building. This is about the focus of our today's webinar. Um, and actually, all these activities like monitoring, collecting, dissemination, support, and mentoring, it happens in collaboration with academia. But beyond that, we try to foster partnerships, both within Ukrainian higher education institutions and international academic institutions, research organizations, and also different support initiatives. And uh, they are vital in creating the network of support and advocacy. Um, and uh, continuing with that, um, firstly, yes, again, the majority of Science for Ukraine members have an academic background. So. Uh, we are part of science world, um, and many of us hold quite a high standing positions in our institutions, such as professors, group leaders, project leaders, senior researchers. And considering the organization's miss mission to support science, Ukrainian science, it is natu natural that we strive to establish also robust collaborations with academic institutions. And it's also essential to mention that at the very beginning in February 20. To you when the war had just started. Well, academic institutions and governments were still figuring out how to provide access and how to provide support and um, assistance and, 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 and what to do with all the situation. University employees and students serving as um, members of civil society, they were at the forefront offering support to their Ukrainian colleagues and so they do the, did this through uh, social media, uh, through their personal connections, etc. But not only that, um, what we saw is that um, university staff, students, they were also advocates who lobbied and convinced their institutions uh, that first support should be provided and, and how it could be done, bringing examples from other institutions, et cetera. So, um, and I, I don't know, it's some, some three months, two, in two months or three months, the process changed and, and, and universities became more active uh, themselves. So uh, the support mechanism like turned upside down. It started as grassroots, but bottom up, and then it turns top down. <clears throat> yes, but, um, as you can see in this uh, slide, um, we try to establish uh, connections with universities uh, to create a broad uh, coalition of support, so to say. And in the beginning, our approach was uh, the following, that we created a banner stating we support science for Ukraine and tried and encouraged institutions that provided some information on we had collaborated with to display this banner in their websites in a visible way. So not only to show active support for the Initiative Science for Ukraine, but also to signal that Ukrainian students and scientists are well, very welcome here. And it's awesome to see that when Googling, uh, in, in Googling the keywords, in brackets, we support science for, for Ukraine. There are a lot of organizations that actually did that and also beyond our um, monitoring. I, I mean, I do not know all of them, uh, but uh, it, 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 it somehow uh, worked um, really well. And there you can see also example from a uh, Spanish institute that uh, stated their support for Ukrainian scholars with this, our banner. Um, and another very valuable way is um, organizing events together with um, organizations, with the universities, uh, research institutions, etc. And Chance for Science took two times uh, in Germany, and and the University of Leipzig was uh, the main organ organizer. We we, we collaborated with them um, to to make this event happen, but this is just only one. Uh, we have several more uh, in, in, in different countries. And yes, we also list some of our main partners in our, um, in, in our 
website. <clears throat> um, so joint initiatives, this is what it is. Uh, collaboration with business, a bit different, of course, uh, and it's not that explicit. Um, currently, it is more in the form of sponsorship, uh, but it's not like a one-way process as we see it, and it gives value to both parties, to our NGO, and also to businesses who collaborate with us. Uh, so, <clears throat> um, and, and we see that those who really care about the situation happening in Ukraine and, and willing to enhance their profile by contributing to a noble cause. Um, so these are, yes, businesses that uh, collaborate and provide, provide support. So we make an open calls. We, we uh, try to raise funds. Um, and sometimes uh, businesses uh, are more willing to contribute to targeted support. For example, this was micro travel grants, or uh, when we were um, raising funds for Leipzig uh, University's Chance for Science conference. Also, uh, we established like a small scholarships, for example, uh, the, the scholarship of that and that business, etc. So to make like their appearance and, and their uh, names visible and, and they give this a little uh, contribution to uh, Ukrainian participants, uh, but uh, not only that. Also, for example, UK uh, this mentoring scheme is very uh, had received a nice support from private uh, private sector, uh, but also skills and expertise sharing. It is, and these collaborations, of course, can facilitate exchange of skills, expertise between academia and uh, businesses. And I I do, I do not no example from the Baltics, but uh, in UK, there is a wonderful example of that, and that's the Cormax Consultancy Group, which is a wonderful example in UK, who runs this uh, twinning, university twinning initiative, where they provide assistance in twinning universities, and this is amazing what they have done together with uh, both Ukrainian universities and, and UK universities. So, that is my short speech for today. Thank you and looking forward to the next presentation and of course Q&A session. Thank you so much for your lightning presentation and for sharing your expertise with us today. It's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker representing the business pillar of our collaborative efforts, Kadri T. Svelte as a COO and project manager of Garage 48. Kadri brings over eight years of invaluable ex experience in uh, uh, spearheading open innovation programs. And her work spans across Europe, Moldova, Ukraine, and Africa, and is supported by an impressive array of frameworks, including the EU International Development Cooperation and both governmental and private funding. So Kadri, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Katarina, uh, and hello to everyone. So just a second, let me share my screen. Is my screen visible to everyone? Yes, we can see your presentation. Okay, great. So uh, thank you for the invitation. Really glad to be here. And um, uh, yes, I am Katri. Uh, and uh, as Katarina already introduced, I have been um, at Garage 48 uh, for eight years now already. And I once back in the day started out as a volunteer and since then uh, have been uh, fulfilling basically all the roles that you could uh, fill uh, in our organization. And um, we are Estonian based uh, organization. We were founded in Estonia uh, 14 years ago, but since then we have had an international reach of um, running different programs in, in 50 countries around the world. And uh, all this has been achievable only through great collaboration. So we have been working together with, um, with governments uh, in Estonia, with different ministries, 
different universities, uh, business incubators, uh, civil society, and also uh, companies and corporations. And although in this webinar we are representing the business pillar, then um, for CAR 48, uh, quite a lot of our work is actually uh, not for profit uh, oriented. So yeah, it's it's kind of a mix for us as well. And um, what we do, so we are mainly about um, organizing different kind of open open innovation programs and hackathons from topics ranging from education technology, cybersecurity, uh, agriculture, wood uh, processing, architecture, uh, space tech, uh, defense, and everything that falls between that. And our goal as an organization is to uh, uh, really empower people in entrepreneurship and technology entrepreneurship. And we are really working on the grassroots level of bringing people in to the technology sector and really introducing what it is about, helping to build the connections, bringing together startup and early founder teams. And both in our partnerships and when engaging participants, uh, we have a very interdisciplinary collaboration approach. So it is always in our focus to bring together people from the academia, from business, from government, uh, and uh, from the civil society as well. And um, we build partnerships uh, between these different collaborations. And also we want to see this in terms of our participants. So that um, this also includes different levels of expertise. We want students uh, working in teams next to very seasoned entrepreneurs and uh, specialists and experts. Uh, we have done a lot of work in youth and female empowerment um, and also uh, being um, in Estonia, we have been one of the first organizations driving the growth of the startup community and the ecosystem, which is nurt nurturing the starting out entrepreneurs. Um, uh, to, to get started. And uh, most recently, we have been uh, very active with this in Africa for the past three years, working on regional levels and, and sharing our experience from Estonia uh, outside. And uh, one very important thing that we do is empower the mentors community with the giving back mindset. So we have thousands of mentors in, in our uh, network who we have worked throughout the um, 14 years. So we always um, focus on engaging in wherever country we go, engaging the local mentors and experts community, and always bringing new people in who would want to learn mentoring and do that with the learn uh, uh, learning by doing approach uh, at our hackathons and events. And uh, most of the mentoring at our events happens on a pro bono basis, uh, trying to cultivate this mindset of of giving back your expertise and knowledge and really building a nurturing ecosystem for starting out founder, founders uh, and, uh, and experts and uh, technology entrepreneurs. And um, if to talk about Ukraine, then uh, Garage 48 uh, has been active in Ukraine uh, for more than 12 years, basically since we started. And uh, we have been on site in, in different locations uh, across Ukraine. Uh, and we even did once in 2019 a hackathon on a train going from Mariupol to Lviv. So Ukraine holds a very, very special uh, place in our hearts. Uh, and we have been uh, supporting the growth of the local technology uh, and startup ecosystem there. Uh, with uh, with different topics uh, and uh, also our empowering women series has uh, has had most activities uh, in Ukraine. Uh, so, um, um, if to talk about uh, the collaboration for the crisis response, then uh, I drew up some uh, some examples to introduce you today, and. Um, I would say that for us, this has been the conti continuation of the work that we have been doing in Ukraine. And uh, it has also been the, um, the 
like the further development of something that we have already been doing before, something that has been already established, and then we have um, adjusted it and uh, and changed the format to meet the needs of of the crisis in uh, in Ukraine. So, for example, one of these examples is our Future of Wood uh, Rebuild Ukraine hackathon uh, that we did in the fall of uh, 2022. And actually, uh, we had been running the Future of Wood series uh, for already five years uh, for um, creating new ideas, new uh, solutions for sustainability and wood processing, forestry and architecture. And uh, with the refugee crisis, uh, we then turned our next event in the series to have a focus on, on trying to find solutions for the refugee housing uh, crisis in Ukraine. And uh, this, uh, this was again a collaboration we did with the Estonian Academy of Arts, uh, then uh, a wood processing competence center in Estonia and the Estonian uh, Research Council. And also we fundraised uh, by bringing in private companies who are also um, passionate about the cause and, and want to support. So uh, this is uh, one of the examples how we could um, increase uh, the uh, the support that uh, we uh, we are providing uh, to Ukraine by bringing uh, bringing our already existing activities format and putting it into the crisis relief um, uh, uh, format. Another one of these examples is a defense hackathon or makeathon uh, that we ran in 2023. Again, a continuation of um, a makeathon series that we had been doing uh, for defense solutions already two years. And this was a collaboration of Crash 48 and the Estonian Ministry of Economic Affairs and Communications. Um, and the most significant example in our case is the Empowering Women Entrepreneurship Program, which actually we started already back in 2019. Uh, and uh, this was a collaboration, or still is a collaboration of Graf 48 and the uh, civil society organization, Estonian Refugee Council. So uh, in 2019, both of our organizations had been working in Ukraine for quite a long time. And then as a part of the Estonian International Development Corporation, we got an idea that, hey, what if we uh, try to design a way how we can bring our activities together and, and design a new program? And since then, uh, we have had a very high success rate, so we have kept developing the program further. So currently, we are in our sixth year in Ukraine. We have continued throughout the full-scale invasion uh, and uh, by now, uh, we um, have welcomed uh, more than 500 participants, uh, 500 women in the program. Uh, and the program itself is also like a further development of what Garage Vodi does on a normal basis. So in a sense, it sits like on the one end of the spectrum of activities that we do. So here we are not empowering uh, startups or technology entrepreneurs but we are taking the startup and technology um, best approaches, best methods and best people as mentors and try to put that into designing micro-businesses led by women uh, living in the war affected areas who are internally displaced people uh, and women in a vulnerable condition uh, due to the um, effects of the war. And uh, having run this program for four years in Ukraine in uh, 2022, in the fall, we also opened this program in Estonia because we realized that now we have uh, a lot of the target group that we were actually working in Ukraine is now in Estonia. And we got the idea that what if we try to implement this same program, the same approach here in Estonia as well by adjusting it to the Estonian context of our very digitalized society different culture and also a very tiny country. Uh, so we have been running the program in Estonia for two years now, having welcomed here 100 women, supported the launch of 12 businesses here. And we are currently fundraising uh, the 2024 program and now also have the ideas of expanding this program 
for all women in Estonia, not only refugees here. So this is the inspiration we have gotten from the Ukrainian women here that they have been doing excellent in actually launching their businesses. And we want to see how this can take all of us further. And thank you. I took a little bit of overtime, so I'm going to stop here. Uh, thank you very much uh, for, um, uh, for listening. And everyone is welcome to uh, connect on LinkedIn. Thank you so much, Kadri, for your impressive presentation. As we conclude today's webinar, I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to all participants, speakers, and organizers for your presence, for your commitment, and your willingness to be part of this crucial dialogue. And of course, for more information and to stay connected, please visit our website and follow, on, follow us on social media. Let this webinar be more than just an exchange of ideas. Let it be a catalyst for action and invitation to explore cross-sectoral opportunities and a platform for fostering intercomprehension principles. Together, we have the power, as Kadri said, and to make a difference and to innovate through diversity and to build a stronger, more resilient communities that stand united uh, in the face of challenges. Thank you for your attention. Stay safe. And we wish you peaceful skies. Дякуємо за увагу. Бережіть себе. Мирного неба.